my god you guys came back really for video part four well thank you welcome i'm so excited to see you guys back here right and let's just talk about the thing what we were waiting for is about unfolding case study how we are going to solve it and i'm going to share some of my clinical experiences with you again be patient get your pen and paper ready because you know i will give you guys a chance to read as well because that's you know i i believe in that i believe that learning a two way journey if a teacher is sitting in a classroom and just boringly saying oh my god this is sam who came to the emergency department oh my god isn't it boring so let's just have that discussion mode on and then get your pen and paper ready and then i will give you guys question i'll give you guys time to read the question and then we'll do the case study together okay so i'm going to share back my screen so be patient guys give me a quick second here this is where we left in the last video and now we will be looking at the sample case study in our video part 4 so now let's just talk about like so what's going to happen in the case study i told you they'll give you one scenario and you have to dig deeper and deeper into it questions are going to be static which means one question at a time and you guys know the cat rule that students they always ask me this question because we are already teaching ng and batch and students they always ask me this question because sometimes what happens is very interesting guys a very very interesting thing which i want to share with you guys because now i'm already teaching case studies to the students so sometimes what happens is when you go to question number 3 and 4 and then you realize whatever you marked in question number 1 and 2 was correct or incorrect right because sometimes you can see as the scene progress or unfolds so students they ask me taran can we go back no guys unfortunately there is no going back you know that in the cat adaptive exams there is only one way straight keep going there is no no coming back okay so that's why you have to use your due diligence with every single question and do your best and i feel like case studies can be your strong hold if your concepts are clear if you know your you know foundations your fundamentals your med surge they are all good to go pharmacology you should be as i said pro in this one and i feel like let's just say if a question came on splenic laceration and i i already know that because as a student i was a good student i studied it there is very highly chance that you're going to do all your six questions correct and again i'm just sharing my opinion as an educator because as i said i'm already teaching it and i am evaluating the performance of lots of my students okay so now let's just look at the screen and again i told you we'll be doing it together so patience i hope you can i know it's like a little bit small uh, but i hope you can still see it on the screen so in this one uh, this is based on clinical judgment model and it told you it's kind of unfolding like you know we'll see back to back what's going to happen this is how you're going to see on your screen as well in the real exam that this is question number 1 out of 6 okay now let's just read the scenario and this is they have given you nurses notes for 10 o'clock and i'll change the color of the pen um multiple times just to show you guys so the nurse is caring for a 78 year old female in the emergency department right so i always share with my students it's very important number one who your client is and where you are working right so it's very important for you to know that right and again these are immersive scenarios immersive scenarios means that's why i told you i'm wearing this stethoscope today because i want to get that feel you know so i want you to imagine when you're reading this question i want you to put yourself into that imagination world and think you are a nurse you're wearing scrubs you're wearing stethoscope you have your name and you have your title right and you have to feel the more feeling and imagination and immersive experience you will have in the scenarios the more chances you have to pass this exam and this is exactly what i teach in my classroom to the students so now let's just read this client was brought to the emergency department we'll just simply read this scenario first by her daughter due to increased shortness of breath this morning daughter reports that the client has been running a fever for the past few days and has started to cough up greenish colored mucus and to complain of soreness throughout her body client was recently hospitalized for the issue with the atrial fibrillation 6 days ago client has a history of hypertension and these are the vital signs they have given to you 
pulse oximetry is 94% on oxygen. Upon assessment, the client's breathing appears slightly labored. Coarse crackles are noted in the bilateral bases of lungs. Skin slightly cool to touch, pale pink in tone. Pulse is plus three irregular. Cap refill is three seconds. Client is alert and oriented to time, place, person. Client's daughter states, sometimes it seems like my mother is confused. So you guys can see that there is lots of data, lots of information giving on, right? Now, and you would see a lot of it is patient's assessment. So if you are somebody who doesn't know assessment, this question is going to be hard. But if you are somebody who knows your assessment, who knows your basics, it's going to be, again, easy question for you guys. Okay, now let's just read the question. Drag the top four client findings that require follow-up. So now you guys already know you're smart. I talked in video number three. Can you guys tell me which scoring system will apply? Is it zero one plus minus or the rationale? Come on, come on, I need the answer. Give it to me, I can hear you guys. Correct, because you exactly know how many number of items you have to select or the answer. So this means which system is gonna apply here? one and zero rule, right? So this means whatever you're gonna pick, you're gonna get marks for that. Nothing, no negative marking. Okay, good job guys. Now here, let's just see here. I'm just gonna share, I'm gonna highlight some of the things for you here. So client is brought to the emergency department because of increased shortness of breath this morning. And patient has been running fever for past few days, greenish colored mucus, so that it's you guys know it's a sign of infection and soreness in the body. And client was also hospitalized six days ago for atrial fibrillation. And now look at the abnormal vital signs. Again, you should know that you know you should know your normal vital signs. Okay. So she has fever, uh, pulse is okay, respiration is okay, blood pressure is a little bit on a higher side, and the pulse oximeter is 94% on two liters, which is not too bad. And on assessment, you can see that there are crackles, which is again an abnormal finding. And skin is cool to touch. Pulse is three plus. So again, I hope you know what three plus pulse means. If you don't know, either you go back to study or join a field PC. And the cap refill is three seconds, which is slightly like one second kind of, you know, normally we take one to two seconds, but one second is not a big deal. Client is alert and oriented again. So in neurological assessment, guys, you should know that your neuro has to be times four time, place, person, situation. So this means your patient is still disoriented. And the client's daughter, sometimes it seems like my mother is confused, right? So even the daughter is saying that my mother is confused, okay? So now, my friends, let's just, I'm gonna help you again. Let's just write down here, whatever we feel is like the most worrisome things, right, for me. Sorry, I'm just gonna change the pen here. So, uh, for me, shortness of breath is the worrisome. What do you guys think about it? Do you guys agree with me or not? Yeah. And uh, running fever from past few days, greenish colored sputum. Yeah, maybe I'm just going to put here. So greenish colored sputum. Sorry, my pen is kind of going a little slow. And what else is abnormal? You guys know fever she has and another thing guys abnormal is she has crackles and apart from that cap refill is three seconds and your patient is kind of disoriented right so these are my topics sorry i'm just gonna write here disoriented Come on, pen, you need some magic or what? Okay. Sometimes computers, you know, they go slow, man. All right. Anyhow, guys, so do you, let's just take the top four findings. And again, you guys know, I'm going to share a tip with you guys. You guys know in your exam, ABC is a priority, right? Um, so anything related with the airway is most of the time the utmost or the number one priority in your NCLEX exam, right? I'm not sure what just happened here, but I'm just going to go back. I don't want to scare you that we have so many slides. So uh, what do you think? So if we talk about it, 
let's just pick the topmost priority I told you with the ABC, right? Uh, lungs sounds. What do you think about it? I would just say yes. Okay. I'm going to mark this. How about vital signs? Because there are two vital signs which are abnormal. So do you think that's going to be your important finding? Yes. Cap refill, I told you not too bad. Client's disorientation, yes. The client has to be oriented to times four if they're doing fine, right? The radial pulse characteristics, right? So pulse is plus three. So I hope you guys know plus one is weak. Plus two is normal. Plus three is the bounding pulse, right? And it's irregular. And again, you would know, will I be too much worried about it at this point of time? Because probably no. Reason being is you can see that the client was diagnosed with atrial fibrillation. So you guys know in atrial fibrillation patients, it's quite common to have that dysrhythmias, abnormalities, right? So I'm not too much worried about it. Am I worried about cough characteristics, right? Patient is having greenish sputum coming up. So you guys know wherever there is green, this means infection. Yes. Can you see that? So simply, these are my top findings. I will be dragging vital signs, lung sounds, client orientation, and characteristics. So basically, if you know your normals, you can easily, easily identify what's abnormal. And then, of course, you know that as nurses, we need to focus on abnormalities because, of course, we want to help the client. And then you should know the strategies and the prioritization. So you guys know ABC is your number one priority, right? So anything with airway breathing comes first in NCLEX, right? So that's like really, 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 really important, okay? I hope you guys enjoyed solving question number one with me. And I'm sorry for the, the slides were moving back and forth. Now let's just move to question number two. And again, you would see that this is how it's going to show in your computer screen, that question number two out of six. And you can see, did you see that interesting thing? It's the same case, right? Everything is in the same, right? So if you read the question a couple of times with a focus, you should be okay. It's not going to take that much time as well, which the students anticipate. But of course, it's going to take more time than the previous hand class, for sure, you know? Now look at this, for each client finding, click to specify if the finding is consistent with the disease process. So now what they, are, they have given you is three conditions, pneumonia, UTI, and influenza, right? So each finding may support more than one disease process. So now they're simply asking you, do you guys expect fever in pneumonia? Now pneumonia is an infection, right? Of course, yes. Do you anticipate fever in UTI? Yes. Influenza? Not all the time, you know, think about it. We always get common cold cough, right? It's not like you always get the fever with this, right? Confusion in pneumonia, yes. UTI, yes, you know. I hope you guys know, specifically elder patients when they get UTI, the number one thing is their neurological status alters, right? Body soreness, do you think it's gonna be common in pneumonia? Yes. UTI, yes. Influenza? Yes, I would just say that. Remember when we have cough and cold, how we feel, you know? Cough and sputum. So you only expect that primarily in pneumonia, right? Not in UTI, not in influenza. Shortness of breath in pneumonia only, right? Not in the other two. So this is how basically you have to select um, in your questions, you know, in the column style questions, you have to analyze the clue, you have to figure out, you have to answer specifically what they are asking you for, right? I hope that makes sense. And then again, now you know, disease findings may do one or more, right? So you, you can either pick one or two. Sometimes in your exam, they will give you a question where they will say you have to only pick one in a column, right? So you will be just picking one answer, okay? So this was our question number two. Now let's just go to question number three. Again, this is how you're gonna see on your screen. And you guys remember this one? Question number three is, this is the diet type question, right? Remember we did that where there are two and I talked about it in video number three. Now this is the question which will be evaluated by rational method. Correct, good job guys, you remember. That's what I was telling you, video number three is important to watch so that you know that what type of question is gonna be graded according to what. So now here, now, if you look at all this scenario, which we discussed the same scenario again, and again, you can read it as many number of times as you want to. 
Now, what do you think the client is at highest risk for developing? Is it hypoxia? Is it stroke? Is it dysrhythmia? Or is it pulmonary embolism? What do you guys think about it? I'm going to give you guys some time to think about it. Right? So most of the time, you know, when I work with students, they always say, Taran, hypoxia. Well, no. If you look at it, patient is already like 94% on two liters, right? So she is not at risk. She already had hypoxia and that's why she was put on oxygen, right? So hypoxia is not our choice here. Then students, sometimes they pick, say, they tell me, there are dysrhythmias. Well, my friends, you guys already know this patient has a history of what? This patient has a history of atrial fibrillation. So having, she's not at risk for dysrhythmia. She already has dysrhythmia, right? So there is a difference for risk for versus no. So if I am a student, I am stuck between two choices, my friends. We are stuck with stroke and we are stuck with pulmonary emboli. What do you guys think? probably can happen to this patient. Think, think, think. And again, pick the hints, right? I don't see any vigorous symptoms of pulmonary emboli, but do you think because this client has atrial fibrillation, do you think this client is at risk for stroke? I would just say yes. And how you can assess that? By evidence by clients neurological status. Why? Because you can see, I told you, in neurological examination, the client has to be oriented times four, time, place, person, situation. And your patient is only oriented to person, place, and time. So this means your client is disoriented. She has atrial fibrillation. So she might be at risk for developing stroke as evidenced by altered neurological status. Makes sense? So if you choose two options correct, your answer is going to be like fully correct. But if you choose any one of those wrong, your answer is going to be wrong. Cool. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a big smile on your face. Okay, then we'll move to the next question. And make sure guys, whenever you're watching our videos, leave us some comments, you know, in the comment box, because I know it's not the live class, you're watching me on the YouTube, but I love to hear from you guys. Any comments, any suggestions? Uh, did you like this video? How interactive it was, you know? And did you enjoy doing case studies? Did you learn something? We love to hear from you guys, okay? So now, guys, you can see here, this is question number four, and you will see another interesting thing here that in the nurse's notes, you have another entry. First entry was at 10 o'clock. Now you got another entry at 12 o'clock. So now you can see here, first, we already know we have read it many times. So call to the bedside by the daughter who states her mother is not acting right. Upon assessment, clients is difficult to arouse pale, diaphoretic in appearance. Now, I want you to imagine this, you know, imagine as a nurse, you entered this room and the patient is like, you're saying, hello, hello, ma'am, you know, whatever her name is, let's just say Samantha. Hello, Samantha. And Samantha is like, uh, 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 she's not getting up, right? She is pale, uh, diaphoretic. You know, it tells you that she's turning yellow. And she's having perspiration, sweating. Her fever is 38.6. And now look at this, guys. Her pulse was 92. Now it has changed to 112. Respiration was 22. It has changed to 32. So can you see that how things are turning bad for her? Now she's into tachycardia, tachypnea. And look at this blood pressure, man. Oh my goodness gracious. Means her blood pressure is falling off. So clearly... What does it tell you when the patient is going into hypotension and tachycardia? This means your patient is going into hypovolemic shock. Means your patient is bleeding somewhere. That's what is happening to your patient, okay? Now, let's just read the question. Now, nurse has reviewed the entry and is planning care for the client. For each potential nursing intervention, click to specify whether the intervention is indicated, non-essential, or contraindicated for this patient, right? Prepare the client for defibrillation. So do you think the client needs defibrillator at this point of time? I don't think so, right? So I'm just going to say non-essential at this point of time. Like, it's not like she's getting into heart attack. She's hypovolemic shock. So there is a difference. Place the client in semi-fowler's position. So again, guys, what do you think? 
can you put somebody who's into hypovolemic shock? So now again, you need your fundamentals of nursing to answer this. When somebody goes into hypovolemic shock, I hope you guys know which position do we give? Trendel and Burke position, right, to that patient. But they're saying semi-fowlers. No, that's going to further reduce the supply to the brain, right? So I'm going to say contraindicated. We don't want to do that at this point of time. Request then request an order to increase the oxygen flow rate. What do you guys think? Yes, I would just say it's indicated. Why? Because look at her oxygen levels. It was 94. Now it's reduced to 91. So I think it's time to turn the oxygen on. Request an order to administer intravenous fluid. Yes, absolutely. Yes. So you guys know when somebody goes into hypovolemic shock, what's the first line of uh, volume, what we choose for those patients. You guys know isotonic solutions are the best solution. And isotonic example is 0.9% NaCl or Ringer's lactate. And you would see most of the time physicians choose 0.9% NaCl in the hospital setting. Yes, I want to give that so that my patient can be saved and I'm maintaining their blood pressure, right? So I'm going to say absolutely yes, indicated. Why not? Request an order to insert additional peripheral vascular device. So this means they're saying, can we add another IV line to this patient? Always, yes. Imagine somebody who's going into shock. We need more than one line. Why? Because just in case if the patient is like losing too much blood inside their body, we want to even might want to give blood transfusion. You never know what's happening. We might want to give two boluses together, right? One from this side, one from the another side, right? Yes, absolutely indicated. And you know, that's the best thing which we can do for this patient, right? So I'm going to say indicated. Okay. Now tell me your honest opinion, guys. When you're doing these questions, think about it. If your basics are clear, your concepts are clear, do you feel these questions are hard? Not at all. I feel like they are easier than the other old NCLEX, to be honest. All right, guys. So the next you can see is again question number five of the six. So the nurse is caring for a 78. Same situation, same scenario. Now they are telling you, click to highlight below the three orders. So again, my friends, you know, when they are saying three orders, they have precisely asked you three orders. So this means by which system they will be evaluating your question? By one and zero system. This means no negative marking. If you choose three options, two options correct, you will be graded accordingly. If you choose one extra, no negative marking for it, right? So these one, three are already kind of highlighted here, right? So I'm going to move forward here. Now you can see this is the last question, question number six of six. Now the nurse has performed the intervention as ordered by the physician for each assessment finding. Click to specify if the finding indicate that the client condition has improved, has not changed, or has declined, right? So now we will be comparing from 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock, right? So of course, if they have given you the scenario of 12 o'clock, so this means you have to compare 10 o'clock information and 12 o'clock. And the most recent, with the most recent information, you will be telling whether the client has improved, deteriorated, you know, or uh, it's unchanged. Now let's just talk about it one by one. So now let's just say most recent was 12 o'clock. And now they are saying the respiration is 36. So from 32 to 36, what do you guys think about it? Is it improved? Is it not changed or is declined? I would say it's declined, right? Because you guys should know what's a normal respiration in adults, 12 to 20, right? Yeah, this is more. Like patient was on 32, now she's on 36. So of course this is declined. Look at the blood pressure. So the last blood pressure was 90 by 60. And now she's at 118 by 68. What do you guys think? Do you think there is an improvisation? Absolutely, yes. So your patient has improved. Normal blood pressure, 120, 80 plus minus 20. You guys know that. If you don't know, you know what to do. You need to contact Happy and PC, okay? Pale skin tone, right? So the patient was pale. She's still pale. So I would just say no change. Pulse oximeter, 91%. It was 91%. Of course, they have not mentioned. They should mention, you know, on two liters of oxygen. I would just say no change in this one. It's 91, 91. And interacting with the daughter at the bedside, right? So now earlier you can say, you can see at 12 o'clock, the daughter was saying, my mother is not acting right. But now she's acting okay. And she's talking to her daughter, interacting with her daughter. So do you think the patient improved? Yes. Okay. That's how 
you solve a case study. But again, this is what is the reality scenario. This is what you're going to do in your real life as a nurse, you know, and that's what they have been telling you to do and all real life scenarios. So again, you need to connect all your dots and then move further, you know, how you're going to do those things with the patient, how you're going to evaluate. So again, your assessment planning, diagnosing, implementation, evaluation, right? So all those things, what we work on, that's what we are kind of focusing on uh, in this one. Okay, I'm just gonna move on to the last uh, bits of this presentation. And I want to say heartiest thank you to you guys for patiently doing all those four paths. But again, guys, uh, we genuinely hope that this video has given you a complete clarity. And we wanted to make a complete packaged bundle for you guys where you don't have to run here and there so that you can find a precise information about NCLEX NGN how the exam is gonna be, what are the changes, how it's different from the old one, how the marking is gonna be, and you know, how we solve the case studies. So this, I hope this video has given you lots and lots of perspective. So thank you so much for patient listening. And you guys should know that FB and PC team is only one call away from you guys, right? And I'm very proud to share with you guys that in the year 2022 itself, the year which has just passed, we had over 1,000 international educated nurses who have passed NCLEX RN examination with us. And you know, uh, sometimes people say it's very hard for people who have ESL, um, which means English as their second language. But you imagine yourself, if FB and PC team can work diligently with people who have English as their second language, pass their exam, we can support any student, doesn't matter if you're from here, if you have studied from Canada, America, Australia, India, Pakistan, Nepal, Bangladesh, you name it, we are a global company, okay? We can support you guys because our team is com comprised of people who have struggled on its own. I was also an internationally educated nurse and I came to Canada as an international student. I always share my journey with the students. I know how hard it is. That's why this company is here to support you guys so that you can have a financial independence. You can enjoy your life because you guys are meant to save someone's life. You are not meant to brew coffees. You're not meant to fry burgers somewhere. You are meant to save someone's life. If you have a knowledge, if you have worked four years, three years on your diplomas, degree, whatever you have done, you deserve to be in this nursing profession. So please, if you need any help with the eligibilities, if you need any help with the exam preparation, even if you just need counseling and somebody to talk to, contact FBNPC, right? So guys, we are, as I said, one call away. You can contact us on our website, www.fbnpc.com. And these are our two numbers. And I want to put a big uh, disclaimer here, guys, that lots of people are scamming students in our name. So we have like lots of people have made fake pages on, uh, you know, different social media platforms. So I would just say, and don't waste any money. FBNPC will never ask you any wire transfers, any gift cards. We don't have any secret leaked questions, nothing like that. We are a genuine institution who's going to genuinely prepare you so that our goal is not just to pass, help you pass your NCLEX exam. Our goal is to become a very successful, accomplished nurse. Because what if you become my nurse one day? How can I take risk with somebody's mother, father, brother, sister? So our team takes it very seriously that if you are studying from us, we want you to give that caliber that you feel comfortable when you go to the clinical settings because all our teachers and all our curriculum developers, they are all Canadian professors. They work in Canadian universities and Canadian colleges. So that's why we are very sure on our programs, like, you know, what content we deliver to the students. So guys, stay away from the scammers. And there is only one way to contact us. Either you can go and put an inquiry on our website, www.fpnpc.com, or you can call us on these two numbers. If you're international, calling us from the international because we have students globally, make sure you use plus one because our company is in Canada, 
So plus one is the code which you guys have to use. And this is the number 306-316-0411. Or if you are within Canada, you can use this toll free number 1-888-383-2672. And so that you are not being charged for your phone call. Our next NGN batch is starting from 10th April. I already told you we are already running one batch and we are very sure we are going to get fantastic results in April. But our next batch is starting from 10th April 2023. So if you're looking for somebody to help you and pass your NGN exam, you guys know that the team you can trust is FENPC. Please go visit us on our social media, do your research, check our results. Your mind will be blown off. Every day we have students passing NCLEX exam, okay? Thank you so much for patient listening. I wanna say thank you, bye-bye, sayonara, shabakhair, sasriyakal, namaste. I hope you enjoyed my presentation and we'll look forward to see you guys in our batches pretty soon. And you guys will be registered nurse. Believe in yourself, okay? Don't let anybody put you down or feel down, okay? You can do it. You just need to have faith in yourself and you're gonna be an amazing registered nurse. Take care, thank you very much.